more on this now with Nader Hashemi. He's the director of the Center of Middle East Studies at the University of Denver. How is the U.S. likely to view this victory by Raisi? Given the low voter turnout and the disqualification of many of the candidates, will it see this win as illegitimate? Well, I think it depends on who in the U.S. you're talking about. Um, the U.S. government, the Biden administration, I don't really think um, cares who wins the election. Uh, their fundamental concern is Iran's uh, nuclear program, and um, they want that uh, program put under international inspection. But within the United States, among uh, human rights activists, among intellectuals, this election will be viewed um, as uh, an engineered election, a fake election, an election that suggests that Iran is moving in the direction of more repression. Um, and so there'll be a lot of um, legitimate criticism of this election and of this new president by people who you know, care about human rights and basic principles of democracy. So do you think that this uh, win by Raisi then won't change uh, the U.S. government's plans, the Biden administration's plans to try to continue negotiations to return to the Iran nuclear deal? That's correct, because um, the decision um, by Iran to engage in nuclear negotiations with the United States, albeit indirectly, is a decision that does not take place at the level of the president. It takes place, uh, it's a decision that takes place at the level of the Supreme Leader and the National Security Council. Um, uh, the senior leadership in Iran realizes that it needs this nuclear uh, problem to go away. It needs sanctions lifted if Iran is going to stabilize its economy and deal with its expanding crisis of internal legitimacy over a restive population, largely young people who are demanding political change, and now are even more frustrated over the you know, collapse of their economy. So you know, the nuclear negotiations in Vienna are not going to be affected by this. If anything, they're probably going to be sped up because the senior leadership in Iran wants to um, uh, put all of Iran's economic problems, blame them all on the outgoing Rouhani administration and give the incoming Raisi uh, government a big boost economically. So I suspect that very soon we're going to see an announcement in Vienna that the nuclear negotiations are coming to um, a conclusion and there will be a, uh, an announcement that everyone will be abiding by the terms of that nuclear agreement. Mm -hmm. Raisi has promised to work to remove U.S. sanctions that have contributed to much of the economic hardship in Iran. But the U.S. State Department uh, added Raisi to its sanctions list in 2019. Do you think that he'll have any success in getting uh, any of these sanctions removed? Well, I don't think... Um um, you know, this is going to be a sticking point between the U.S. and Iran. They don't have direct diplomatic, you know, uh, um, uh, ties between the two co countries. Um, so um, whether there are sanctions on the Iranian president or not, I don't think is going to, um, you know, really matter in terms of um, U.S.-Iran relations. Uh, the big question is, uh, as I just mentioned, is the nuclear negotiations, and those are going. Those negotiations are going forward. In fact, I would also add, though, that the Iranian uh, government, the senior leadership, the supreme leader, very much welcomes tensions and hostilities with the United States, with the West, because they view that as a, a source of unity among their uh, factional camp to uh, maintain control of the Islamic Republic. I mean, the only card that they really have to play is a nationalist card. And so, um, uh, um, you know, having a standoff with the West, with the United States over Iran's regional behavior or, or over Iran's human rights record actually uh, plays into the ide ideological narrative of Iranian hardliners. All right, let's leave it there. Nader Hashemi joining us from Denver. Thank you.